Hi beautiful people, welcome back. Hope everybody is doing fantastic wherever you are in this world. Happy Friday, happy Veterans Day. If you are snoring, it's Max. He is right here next to me on my bed. I have a California King bed, but Max insists on being right up against me. So if you're here snoring, it is Max. The reason I'm in my bed is I feel so worn out. I've never felt this way. I can't even say how long. I just feel so exhausted. Like I've got nothing in me. And it seems as though I'm coming down with the flu. Because a week before last, my son actually was at school and the nurse called me and she says, oh, you need to come get your son. He has a fever of 104. I dropped everything. I went to fetch my son, took him to the doctor's office. He got the flu. And I don't know if it's just an Alabama thing, but they're keeping the kids home for at least five days before they sending them back to school. My son was clear to go back to school last week, Thursday. Friday, I had to leave to go back out of town because my youngest daughter had a competition, her robotics competition at Troy University. So I headed out the night before with my mom, my dad, and my little girl. Now, before anybody says I'm the worst mother going, no. My son came over with his wife. They spent the night with the other three kids. So the next day, competition day, I think we were at the university for about not even an hour. My daughter calls me and she's like, Mom, I feel so bad. I can't go to work. And you could hear in her voice she wasn't doing good. She made a phone call, let them know that she wasn't coming to work. I left my dad with my baby girl at the competition and my mom and I drove back home so I could take her to the urgent care and yes, people say, but why didn't you let your son take her? You know when kids are sick, they just want their mother. So we headed back home, took her to the urgent care and they said she got the flu. I was just saying to my parents, okay, looks like they all gonna get this one at a time. And I said, like, who's next? And it seems as though I'm next. And I rebuke this with everything. I don't want it. I don't need it. Let's get into this video. But before that, my usual disclaimer. Please do not take what I say as fact. Feel free to do your own research and come to your own conclusion. I am going to do my best, you guys, to keep this video short because there's a lot that i got to discuss. So Katie Joy posted on her Facebook. And it was a posting from Joel it and it says the big house it's not how big the house is it's how happy the home is to which katie joy says jill dillard shared the story the Duggars home is called the big house given ginger's book announcements and her parents response to the tabloids i can't help but think this is a message of solidarity to her sister ginger 100 percent, i disagree because yesterday when Katie Joy did a video about Ginger's book, the second half of a video, she shared whoever responded to Ginger's post. And one of those people was Joel, to which Joel says, proud of you, sis, and following God's leading in your life. Look forward to reading the book. Now, this, this is what Katie Joy read, okay? But Katie Joy thinks that the posting Joel Dillard made about the house is in solidarity to her sister. No, she already showed her solidarity to her sister. This was through a post. I can almost guarantee you that Joel had spoken to her sister Ginger or Ginger told Joel prior to this about the book coming out and they had a conversation about it. My thought about this whole posting is probably for the others that are still in that house, that are still in Jim Bob's claws. But Katie Joy just needs to keep this momentum going. Read into things that, in my opinion, are not there. And a day ago, Katie Joy was talking about this Jared Lasik Adventures with Purpose story. She never make a video about it. And I was like, that's weird. She's talking about it, but never make a video about it. So was Katie Joy just feeling the waters to see that if she does even make the post about it, she'll see how much backlash she gets. In my opinion, that's exactly what she was doing. She was just putting her feelers out to see how she would be received in this true crime community. And in my opinion, they're not even going to accept her. 
they're just going to spit her out. Because I've seen and I've heard the bigger creators in the true crime talk about Katie Joy, and it's not in a good way. She says, I watched a number of videos by creators, interviews and videos by AWB employers or contractors. What I found disturbing is all these collaborators spend all this time wanting to clear their names. Their videos are monetized and they are doing live streams as though this is content. Why wouldn't it be content for them, Katie Joy? Because in my opinion, when the story broke by Ikad Mal, and then the victim and her cousin was interviewed by Down the Rabbit Hole News. Let me clear this up. Only now Katie Joy is the second person that's having a problem that I've seen with Down the Rabbit Hole News interviewing the victim. The victim was in Down the Rabbit Hole News' chat. And this was their interaction from the get-go. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Who am I speaking with? This is the cousin. This is the cousin. Okay. Um, and, and you don't have to, I, I got, I got a banner up, so you don't have to show my face, your face or anything like that. We can just speak this way. Okay. I see I got private messages. You're, <laughs> you're doing everything correctly. Don't worry. Um, now mind you, I, I can't confirm that you're hurt. And I honestly, I just want to, whatever you want to tell me, you talk and I'm going to shut up. Okay. Honestly, I really don't know what to say. Chessie was asking me if I was going to name myself and I didn't want to. You don't have to. I exactly. I feel like being that it's still an open case, that yes. I, I don't want to put anything out there that could cause don't. problems. Now, as you heard the victim say, she's not going to say anything that will jeopardize the case. She wanted to be there. Down the rabbit hole news, to my knowledge, did not seek her out. She did what she felt was right. Why does she find it so disturbing? The collaborators are clearing their names. Isn't that the right thing to do? As I said, when I watched Ikad Mel, I watched Down the Rabbit Hole News. There were so many channels I was watching. Cinema Shogun, which I came across and subscribed immediately. I was so impressed and glued to my screen listening to him. He is so authentic. He is straightforward and I appreciate that. I will leave his channel down below. Go check it out. The Pascal Show. Absolutely fantastic. Check him out. And they all wanted to know. And that was a question out of all their mouths. Where do all these people stand that used to work? alongside Jared. Now this woman finds it inappropriate for them coming out saying their piece and she feels but them clearing their name and monetizing this content is wrong. She says this is a serious crime not content. Katie Joy what George Duggar did to his sisters very serious crime. You monetize your videos. You made it content and still make it content to this day. You even sat on your Instagram live and demonstrated how he did what he did to one of his sisters. Also, Sophie Long, a child. You took it upon yourself to read a comment to say Sophie Long is a brat and then went further than that to actually double down and go on somebody else's channel and call Sophie Long a brat again. I remember seeing that video and I remember like thinking the way that the girl was acting in the beginning where she was like shaking her head. I was like, is this like, is she acting? It seemed, it didn't seem authentic in that, in that part. I was like, it, it's like a movie. Like, cause she was like, no. And then she's like running away and coming back. And it just, I was like, this doesn't seem real. And then I did a live stream on my blog's channel, which I'm on right now. And I was talking about how I'm a mom. I have an eight year, almost eight year old. And we were talking about how kids can get a little bit bratty when they don't get their way and they don't get what they want. Of course. Yeah. They yeah. 
And so now I'm like, you, everyone's like, you called Sophie a brat. And I'm like, can kids not get bratty? And what I noticed was with her language, it didn't, it was way too mature for her age. Gabby Petito, you made that content. That was a serious crime. Moving on. If you are a witness, please be careful sharing details online that could harm the case. Seriously, Katie Joy, you yourself have been sued three times. And throughout those lawsuits of yours, you couldn't shut your mouth. You were online all the time, continuing to disparage the same people that are suing you. You couldn't keep your mouth shut. So who are you to put it out there to a victim and tell her or give advice or whatever this is, what she should do, how she should do it, where she should do it. Not your place. If you worked for him, trying to clear your name right now makes you look selfish and not respectful of victims. How respectful are you to victims, Katie Joy? What have you done for anybody, let alone a victim? I'll be waiting. Who are you to say? But these people that worked for him coming forward, denouncing him for the fucked up things that he did. You saying they are selfish? You know who's a selfish one, Katie Joy? You are. Because you think you know it all. You think you know what's best for this victim. You know shit. You need to check yourself. I saw a lot of people saying saying, I didn't know, blah, 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 but not enough about the victims. All those people that worked for him, the interviews I saw, they denounced what he did. They left him and they were all about the victims. What are you watching? You think you are above it all. You think you are invincible. You think you are the queen of models. You're the queen of trash, in my opinion. Newsflash, no one matters in this case but the victims. And ensuring the criminal case is not impeded by social media antics. You should know that from experience, right? But clearly, the way I see it, Katie Joy, all these people that are reporting on this case is all about the victims. So you need to stay in your lane. You truly do. Also, any of these men claiming not to know about the past but worked with him, bullshit. I spent less than an hour looking at his criminal history, fraud and bankruptcy to know his crime spent 30 years. He was never a good guy. And you know, Katie Joy, I such and wonder, were you ever a good person? Were you? So what you're saying is that these men that worked with him knew about this? knew about his crime spanning 30 years. I'll take away from this what you're saying is that these employees should have done a background check on their soon-to-be employer. Can anybody, anybody out there that's watching this video, please enlighten me. Is that a thing? Is that what people do here? Because I have not worked my entirety living in the United States. I am grateful and blessed to be a stay-at-home mother. But when I did live in South Africa and I was in the South African police force, I didn't do a background check on them. I don't know anybody that worked in the private sector to do a background check on their potential employers. So is this something that is done here in the United States? As I said, please enlighten me. Ignoring the red flags of someone to gain subs or followers as a blind spot viewers should ignore. I will keep an eye on the story, but don't have a ton of interest in entering the community surrounding AWP or the creators that cover it. Because Katie Joy, in my opinion, they would not welcome you. They won't even eat you up. They'll spit you out immediately. And why don't you cut the bullshit, Katie Joy? Because you say that you're not interested. That's not true. 
in my opinion, you are so interested. You've already invested into the story. But you, in my opinion, are too afraid to enter this community because you know that the shit that you have caused with some of these people in this community. So let's not try act humble and you want to do the right thing. Cut it out. It just does not suit you. Then she goes on. After spending the day researching the Jared Lacey arrest and details surrounding adventures with purpose, I noticed a lot of problematic channels covering the topic and so much drama occurring. But where's the drama? Because every video that I've watched, everybody seems to be on the same page. Saying what a piece of shit, not the exact words, what Jared is. How arrogant he is. How he needs to be held accountable for what he's done. So I'm taking it as the only person you're having a problem with and following suit with your employee, in my opinion, Unirock, is the interview that Down the Rabbit Hole News did. Get over yourself, Katie Joy. Your ass is burning because she got the interview and you didn't. And I would not be surprised if people are ready, warned the victim and anybody else about you, Katie Joy. My coverage, if I proceed, will not include the YouTubers or community he existed in. So where does that leave you, Katie Joy? Just digging into this man's personal life, digging up his wife's past, digging up his past, all his family members' past, throwing all this out there. Because that's what that's your reputation, Katie Joy. Even the attorneys that's dealing with 7M know you to be like that. That's why they're trying so hard to keep whatever paperwork you need for your discovery between the attorneys and not for your eyes. But we're going to get into that. These crimes are so severe and atrocious and the way it's been handled by creators is pretty disturbing to me. <laughs> you a joke. Mm -hmm. This isn't a gossip scandal. This is child essay, fraud and a family ripped apart. Damn right it is, Katie Joy. Yeah. And by you, in my opinion, inserting yourself in it will just make it 10 times worse. I can't tell you what to do. You can do whatever you want to do. But you're not going to do any justice for these victims. Because you exploit victims, in my opinion. You make them your cash cow. Look what you've done with the Duggars all these years. You've made a damn good living on the Duggars. And what, you're going to come do it again? You did it to Gabby Petito? As I said, you want to be the queen of models. Do you know what this woman has lived through all these years, Katie Joy? You have no clue. You, in my opinion, is basically trying to tell her to be silent. Who the fuck are you to even try do that? This pain, the anguish that this victim has been through all these years watching the man that did this to her as a child succeed in life, move on in life and prosper in life, have a family, live a good life, be happy with his family. While she suffered all this pain and no repercussions for him. And you want to tell her to be careful sharing details online. You may be a celebrity journalist on a piece of paper. But in my eyes, you are the most disgusting human I've ever come across. For you to carry on like you give a damn about this victim. You don't give a damn. You're just trying to weasel your way into the story. To come across like you're on her side. You are there for her. I call bullshit on that. I truly do feel... That Katie Joy is just dipping her toe in to feel the water. Because she knows that if she tries or goes, ventures down this road into the true crime community, 
she's not going to be welcomed with open arms. She's burned those bridges a long time ago. After spending a day researching this man's past life, do you think other people haven't done it already? Yes, they have done it. But it's totally irrelevant because what's important right now is on those court documents. It's all about this victim getting justice. That's all it is about now. You didn't pick up on this man's past. You weren't the one to find out about all this. But what you do see is the dollar signs rolling in front of your eyes. You feel you can cover the court case. You can get involved that way. But you know for a fact, Katie Joy, that the true crime community is not going to welcome you with open arms. So you guys, let me know what you think about all this down in the comment section. But before I end this video, I want to bring to your attention that Uncivil Law did go over all Katie Joy's filings. And in my opinion, it's a must watch. You will be entertained. And I'm not saying that I want anything bad to happen to Katie Joy. Uncivil has always been on the right track. And what I took away from it is the fact that Katie Joy truly feels, in my opinion, that she's going to settle with Robert Chin, with 7M. I truly feel, especially the way she's been acting in the past few weeks, she truly thinks she's invincible. And you know what? We don't know what the future may hold. I'm not saying anything bad. But me personally, if, like I always say, if I'm in that position, I would always expect the worst, but hope for the best. But also, in Katie Joy's position, facing a lawsuit where if I could be held responsible for paying somebody a million dollars, I would be hiding under a rock, doing my videos from under a rock, and just not being so fucking arrogant, snarky, and think that I am above at all. But at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's all about Katie Joy, and she will always do what she wants to do. But like I said, it's a must watch. He breaks down everything. I will also list that video down in the description box. And like I said, I'll be listing all the channels that I've mentioned. Go check them out so you make up your own mind if they float your boat, if they don't float your boat. And I'm going to say this again. To this victim, we stand with you. And to all those that have come up against Jared, good job. Fantastic. Good for you. Thank you guys so much. Have a fantastic long weekend. Please be safe out there. Be kind to one another and don't forget, make good memories. Bye, guys.